Now listen, this, this is the father. This is the father's house. This is a type and shadow. This is a picture of the church. How many of you know we are the house of God? So religion draws near to the house of God right here. The first thing that he hears is music and dancing and he's got a problem with it. Music and dance, what, what, what are we doing dancing in a church? What are we doing dancing? And I'll tell you what, I mean, I, I don't know what exact was going on here. In the, the, this is the deal. The Father loves to celebrate. The Father wants celebration going on. Because when we come to the Father's house, we're not celebrating or focusing on our weaknesses, but we're focusing on the goodness and love of our Heavenly Father, and that's what we celebrate. Well, we're called Celebration Church. We're not called Celebration Church so we can come here and focus on what's wrong with the world and what's wrong with ourselves and what we think is wrong with other people. We're not here to celebrate our weaknesses. We're here to celebrate the goodness of God. We're here to celebrate who Jesus is. And this is where religion, this is where the older brother first went wrong. He was focusing on the weakness of man instead of focusing on the goodness of God. So immediately he had a problem with the whole situation. Dancing. And I'll tell you what, I don't know what kind of dancing was going on in the father's house, but I bet, it, bet you, you know, it was a, it was, hmm. <laughs> I guarantee you they were dancing. Not the little Christian two-step, you know. <laughs> I bet there was some throwdown, baby, some hmm and something like that. Music! There's music going on, and think about this, the older brother heard it while he was way out of the house, must have been a little loud. <laughs> Father God must have had it turned up, baby. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to say here, and this is the first point that I wanna make, religion despises freedom. Religion despises freedom. Let me read the rest of this pas passage here. He heard the music and dancing, so he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. Verse 27, and he said, your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father's killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. But he answered to his father, he says, lo, these many years I have been serving you, I have never transgressed your commandment at any time. Come on! <laughs> You're telling me, do I have some parents out there in the house today? Do any of us, no matter how great your kid is, do any of us have a son or daughter that has never transgressed, never disobeyed one time in their entire life? Of course not. I mean, really, if he's never transgressed, well, why don't, he could be Jesus. <laughs> but see, that's what religion does. You know what religion ends up doing in us? We become blinded. Remember what Jesus says? He says, you're so quick to point out the speck on your brother and the whole time you've got a plank in your own? You can't even see that you're in the same situation or we're in the same situation? Look what he goes on and he says. He says, you know, I never transgressed your commandment right and you never gave me, you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. Bull. <laughs> I mean, I could challenge that too. You know what I'm saying? Any of you have teenagers, you ever heard that? You never let me do this. And you're thinking like, well, I'll let you do it last week and the week before. In fact, I can think of like 12 times just right off the top of my head. You know, or everybody's getting to do this. And then you're like, well, who's everybody? And they're like, uh, you know them. <laughs> well, who's them? And you find it's like one person. <laughs> 
So he goes on in verse 30, he says, look, but as soon as this son of yours came who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. In other words, see, instead of focusing on the goodness of God, he's focusing on the weakness of man. He's focusing on his brother's faults instead of focusing on the goodness of his father. And this is what you see religion do every time. This is how people stop valuing mercy over sacrifice. They start focusing on the weakness of man instead of the goodness of God. This is how people value ritual over relationship. They start focusing on the weakness of man instead of the goodness of God. This is how people end up valuing law over love. They start focusing on the weakness of man instead of focusing on the goodness of God. That's where the older brother should have had his focus. In verse 31, the father says, son, you're always with me and all that I have is yours. It was right. Everybody say right. It was right. In other words, this is the right thing to do. It is right that we should make merry and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. He's saying this, it is right that we be merry. And this is what I mean by how religion despises freedom. Religion always has an attitude like this. This is what the older brother wanted. It focuses on the weakness of man. And it's like, hey, look, you're, you're, the, the, he's getting all free. There needs to be some more repentance, dad. There needs to be some more, there, there, there needs to be some more sadness. He needs to get out here and he needs to earn our acceptance back. There needs to be some more repentance. It's too happy in here. This needs to be a somber occasion. This needs to be a solemn assembly. That's what religion always does. It always for this needs to be more solemn. This needs to be more sad. This needs to be more serious. There needs to be more repentance. He, he's got he's, he's to be punished a little bit. No, the father says it is right that we're merry. You wanna know why? Someone did suffer. You know who it was? Jesus. Someone did go through some sadness and some solemnness. You know who that was? Jesus. Jesus paid the price for our sins. And what this is analogy of is look, when people come into the house of God, they need to be met with the Father's love and we need to celebrate that Jesus paid the price for all of their sins and it's right to make merry. Of course repentance is important. That, that son ended up repenting. Of course, being, see, there's a difference between being somber and being sober. So religion does. Religion wants you to be somber. God just wants you to be sober. Religion confuses holiness with harshness. They think somehow if you're holy, you're more strict. You know, and it's, 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 it's a holy glare. I remember when I just got saved and... Uh, Man, I thought I was doing so good. You know, I wasn't going to church at all. And I was going to church like two or three times a month on Sunday mornings. I mean, come on, I, I thought I was like the Apostle Paul. <laughs> I mean, I, I was unchurched. I went to a, a, a church a couple of times growing up, like Easter and Christmas and all that, all, all that kind of stuff. But I mean, I was like going to church most Sundays. Man, my sins were forgiven. I was fired up, I was doing great, and I'll never forget I got this call from this guy, and he's like, look, you're not, you're not coming to church on Sunday night. You need to come to church on Sunday night. Now, let me qualify this, okay? Because I know what you're thinking, because I've asked several of you here at the Midtown service. 